Thank you for taking the Flowers for Pollinators training. We're so excited for you to use these tools in your community and look forward to seeing how you encourage people to plant flowers for pollinators. This video will show you how to access various components of the volunteer toolkit through the web page and help you develop ways that you can engage your community. Because this toolkit is only for volunteers who have attended the Flowers for Pollinators Train the Trainer session, you will only be able to access the web page once you've completed the training. If you have any questions, please reach out to the Master Gardener Leadership Team by emailing mgweb at umn.edu. We've created a variety of materials that can reach people at many different levels of existing knowledge about plants and pollinators. You can use any of these materials however it makes the most sense in your community. We've grouped these materials according to how you may use them, such as planting a learning garden, teaching a class, or setting up a table. But, how do you know which of these materials to use? First, consider the audience that you'll be working with and what they may already know. To help with this, we've created the Flowers for Pollinators Continuum of Learning. This chart gives an idea of what types of materials are best for what types of audiences. First, consider someone who may have very little knowledge about plants and pollinators. How can you best reach out to this individual when they may not even know that pollinators need plants to survive. You can build awareness with simple, easy to comprehend materials, such as a packet of seeds or the Providing for Pollinators rack cart. You can also install interpretive walk-by signage, which can reach out to people without much prior knowledge and simply build awareness of the natural world around them. Let's say that the local garden club wants to learn about what plants are best for pollinators. It's likely that those attending this presentation already know a fair amount about pollinators and plants, so you can move along the continuum to develop a growing interest in these individuals to learn more. The material created for this level of understanding is a little bit more in depth. Here, you can teach a class, do hands-on activities, and help people learn about what flowers work best and how to cultivate the best pollinator habitat. Once you have an idea of what your audience may already know, you can consider what types of materials you'd like to use from this toolkit. Take a look at the web page where we've grouped things together according to how you may use them. Let's go through each of these pages and look at the options available, starting with teaching a class. This page is full of materials to help you teach your class. These materials are geared towards individuals who may already know about plants and pollinators, but are interested in learning more. On this page, you can use a news release to advertise the class in your community. Simply change the items in red. You can download a PDF of the PowerPoint presentation, Flowers for Pollinators, a handout to give class attendees that will outline what they'll be learning that day, and you can read and review the speaker's notes, which will give you background information that'll better help you be able to answer questions that come up during the presentation. There are also a ton of in-class activities and resources that you can use, such as the fridge survey that asks class participants to look inside of the refrigerators and figure out what items they consume on a regular basis that are created by the help of pollinators. There are also various plant lists and demonstration garden maps for you to use in class with various activities. Let's say you'd like to install a demonstration garden or show off pollinator plants you already tend to in your community or garden. This is a great way to build awareness about pollination and what pollinators need within members of your community. On this page you can find walk-by interpretive signage meant to build awareness of pollinator plants. If you'd like a set of these walk-by interpretive signs, please email Jackie. There's also a pollinator cafe sign, which you can request by simply filling out this form.
Are you planning on providing educational information in your community by setting up a table? Take a look at the resources available for building awareness on this page. You'll find a preview of what the printed brochures and rack cards look like, have access to a poster that you can print out, and see what the signs will look like. Please contact Jackie if you would like any of these materials. We'd like to know how you use these materials. Evaluation results are needed in order to demonstrate the value of these educational tools and their outreach of trained volunteers. Use these resources to collect evaluation data from the classes you take and let us know how you plan to use the materials in the toolkit by filling out the pledge card. You can see we have a class roster to collect information from class attendees, an evaluation form to see what they've learned, and then a record keeping form that allows you to put the information together. Please return all of this information to Jackie by emailing her so that we can collate the results. The following pages are to provide you some information about this project. Here, you can find a list of the many educators, experts, and individuals who contributed to this project. You can take comfort in knowing that this team of folks have ensured any material found within this toolkit is science-based and useful for your work. In addition, make sure you check back to the Coming Soon page, where you'll find out new resources we're developing, such as in-class children's curriculum to encourage more pollinator-friendly gardens in your community. There are a lot of materials on this webpage, and they're all available to you as a trained Master Gardener volunteer. Consider using this exercise to help you determine what materials are best for the community members that you'll be working with. I'll go over a few examples so that you can see how to use this information. I have a few ideas of activities I'd like to do in the community. Using the Flowers for Pollinators Continuum of Learning, I can fill out these charts to help me determine what tools to use. My first idea is to set up a table at the county fair. I'll be interacting with the general public, and since I'll likely talk to both new and seasoned gardeners, I can use the continuum to determine that I'll be building awareness and growing interest. To facilitate the best type of learning, I'll use the Walk By Interpretive Signs and have the Flowers for Pollinators and help pollinators thrive, printed materials available. I'd also like to highlight the pollinator-friendly plants located in the demonstration gardens outside of the local extension office. The general public will walk by these gardens, and so I'll be building awareness. The walk by interpretive signs will be best for this purpose. It'd be great to teach a class to the general public at the local library. I'm going to assume that mostly gardeners will attend this session, which means the audience is higher on the continuum of learning. I'll be helping them grow an interest in flowers for pollinators. For this teaching opportunity, I'll use the PowerPoint, the handout, speaker notes for my own benefit, and a few plant lists and garden maps for hands-on activities. I won't forget to evaluate my efforts either. Lastly, my daughter wants people to notice her pollinator-friendly sunflowers in the community garden plot. The general public will be walking by her plot, so we'll focus on building awareness about pollinators and request a pollinator cafe sign. As always, if you have any questions about the materials, would like to tell us how you use this information, or to provide feedback about this toolkit, then please contact the Master Gardener Leadership Team at mgweb at umn.edu. We look forward to seeing the great work you do with these materials. Thanks for taking the time to become trained and for making a difference in your local community through the Master Gardener Volunteer Program.